Hey fellow Aquas, how y'all doing? Welcome, we're gonna be doing your first half of November journal reading here. I gotta tell you about the meditation I just had. I, uh, oh wow. I heard a song that I have not heard since my childhood, which was amazing. It's called Could by Brian, Mc, Brian McKnight. Could by Brian McKnight. And then I saw the image of a knight, so I feel like it's a play on words too with the McKnight. And then there's a lyric in there where it's like, when I look into your eyes, they tell me that you're mine, but I keep asking myself, could you be the one for me? Could we dance the night away? I wanna tell you every, I wanna give you everything, though I don't have much. I, you can take a listen to the song. But what I saw was, okay. If anyone has seen the Boz Lerman, um, Romeo and Juliet, <clears throat> there's a scene where they're at like a masquerade dance and Claire Danes and Leo DiCaprio have on those half masks because it's like a masquerade ball. And it was really funny. I saw them dancing in a ballroom and then it was like, I heard the line when I look into your eyes, but they couldn't, like it was like there was this mask and the eyes are, you know, obviously visible, but the, there was like this thing of like, what you can see versus what you can't. And then I saw this curtain, like a stage theater curtain like coming to a close, it was outdoors. And then I saw like a glimpse of stuff happening behind the scenes that was interesting because I got a feeling that I wasn't supposed to be looking at it. Like, like it was like someone, you know, in the meditation, like I had wandered backstage through my third eye and they were like, get out of here. <laughs> get out of here with that. Go on the other side of this curtain. You don't belong back here in this backstage. It feels like something is coming. And it was very much the star card energy too. It was very much at night, uh, nighttime, just full of stars. Um, dancing Masquerade Could by Brian McKnight. Also, I saw the image of a golden eagle. Golden eagle uh, represents Scorpios, and we are in Scorpio season. So, also the eagle is very much about, you know, yes, yes, yes. It is very much about clear seeing and, and taking the bird's eye view and looking at the bigger picture, but it's also like a tower-like energy for, I just saw 222 on the timer. What on earth are we about to talk about? Uh, it's also about a tower-like energy in terms of the eagle swooping down on its prey. So I feel like something's gonna be happening quite quickly here um, that only seems like it's quick. There's something like about behind the scenes or what, you know, we can glimpse coherently, but I, I, it's very interesting. There's this, there's like this feeling of you don't need to see what's coming because it's, it's going to be such a surprise and, and it doesn't need to be ruined or analyzed before it gets there. You know what I mean? It's very interesting. Let's see what comes up. What's the animal energy for Aquarius or first half of November? Please and thank you. Oh my God. I just, okay. Kind of knew this was going to come out. So I'm absolutely obsessed with this for us. You know, the bear is very much about, you know, coming out of the cave at the right time. So if you think about it, like bear energy, earth, earth energy here, of course. With the bear energy, they know when it's time to go and hibernate in the cave and they know when it's time to come out. They're not gonna come out early. They're not gonna come out late. They don't need an alarm clock. There's no pressing the snooze button. It's really just about, I will come out when I am good and ready. And I wanna point out something, this kind of like sun imagery here and what's being illuminated. And then that idea, the image of the cave and how it's dark in a cave and what we can't see and coming out into the light. I, I feel like there's about to be an illumination or a big reveal of some sort, right? You know, this bear energy too, bear is very much about groundedness. Obviously it's an earth animal here, but it's also really about, you know, trusting what comes towards you, right? The, the bear is very much about like, yeah, like I'm, I'm gonna find the berries when I need them. I'm gonna, you know, everything is going to naturally manifest for me. Why? Because I practice divine timing by coming out of the cave at the right time. Ugh, it's this feeling of like divine timing and getting glimpses of, of what's to come, but not actually being able to see it like fully behind like the masquerade mask. It's really funny, but it feels very juicy. I must say, it feels super juicy. Okay. Oh, and then Goldilocks and the three bears too. Too hard, too soft, just right. 
coming out of the cave at the, you know just the right time so this can also be about you know th this is the antithesis of rushing as well it's just like d divine to oh my god i split the deck and i got the star okay let's do this <laughs> Let's do this. Again, the full moon star. You know, the bear is, you know, a beautiful energy. We can look at this as like a mama bear too, or even a papa bear. It's a very protective, sturdy, long-lasting, reliable energy as well. It's not something that's gonna come in and then leave just as quickly, right? It's a very, it's a beautifully stable energy. I like it. I like it when the bear comes up. Also personifies the emperor for me. Or the empress. It's the emperor, the empress. I tie that animal to. Really gorgeous. Hello. The hierophant. So we got a major arcana starting us off here. I'm all about it. You know... The Hierophant, you know, number five, it is very much about a traditional approach to things. So this is like Cardinal Wolsey, you know, I like to say, King Henry VIII's uh, religious advisor, where it's like, oh, you want to get a divorce and go Protestant? No, we're Catholic. So it's very like that, that very like right way and a wrong way, which, by the way, is very similar to the emperor, because it's like that this is what uh, the key that comes right after the emperor. Because emperor is four, this is five. So it's like a branch off of that where it's like, no, it, it's black and white. We don't have much room for gray, but the, but the positive aspect of this key, as it were, is that also what goes around comes around in the sense that everyone will get their just desserts for better or for worse. And there is some comfort to be found in that. There is some comfort to, I'm getting a, I'm getting some hanged man Tuesday energy here as well. There's something about this tree and the way it's bringing off and forming. I feel like there are some things, either aspects of ourself or external events and or people or opportunities that are going to manifest that divine timing is going to be incredibly important around. Yeah, the Hierophant, again, there, there is something very comforting about, we, we also call this the marriage key as well, right? There's something very comforting about it because at the end of the day, it's like, okay, at the end of the day, like everything is going to happen, you know, as it's meant to one way or the other. Like we have free will, but there is some comfort around that. All right, what else is going on for Aquarius? Okay, I got two. They're moving me right. Oh, I cannot. Uh, okay, do we just get three major arcanas in a row? We definitely did. So, hi, death. Hi, Scorpio energy. Was I not talking about the golden eagle representing Scorpio? So, <clears throat> we just had the new moon in Scorpio, right? News at nine. We know this. We just had that new moon. Um, <clears throat> for some, it was it was difficult and, <laughs> and very transformative as death can be. But I have to tell you something, and this has been coming up in these readings where there's some. I'm drawn to this candle, and anyone who set an intention around this new moon in Scorpio, or at least was actively thinking about what could use a full death so that it can rise again, you know, like Lazarus style and transform and rise, right? rise from the dead, um, all, all new and all that good stuff. There is something about, for those of you who are in mind of that around this new moon and used it as the opportunity that it was to highlight what has been on life support and needs to be fully let go of, right? They're showing me this image, uh, it's kind of dark, but hey, we're in Scorpio season, the Scorpio key, key came out, and I saw a golden eagle, so let's go there. <laughs> let's go there. Um, they're showing me this image of someone on life support and how that kind of limbo and being in between, you know, the here and the there, it, it's, it's painful and awful and unpleasant. And I feel like in terms of like, you know, this new moon in Scorpio was an opportunity. And by the way, we have the next couple of weeks until the next full moon of the influence of this new moon. So it's, this is something that's going to be, you know, going on here. Uh, possibly, yeah, probably through the rest of the Scorpio season, actually, where it's like this time of year, the season that we are in, it's an opportunity to really examine what aspects of ourself 
or our given circumstances have been on life support, are we going to resuscitate those or are we going to completely let them go and let them die? That's the question, right? That's the question here. I got to tell you, you know, this Scorpio season, whatever season we're in, there's, there's an opportunity within that. There's going to be elements of it. But the fact that the Scorpio came in right at the top with that golden eagle and it's here in the present energy and these are three major arcanas. In a way, I feel like this is very center stage for us Aquarians right now where it's like, okay, well, what you going to do? Let's take a dispassionate assessment. Let's see, when I say dispassionate, you know we have this, you know, uh, this belief, uh, we get this wrap around, oh, Aquarians don't feel things. They're, they don't feel, well, we know that that's not true. We know that we feel more deeply than any other sign. It's just that we don't show it. That's how deep it goes. It's because you can throw a penny down through the wishing well of our emotions and never quite hit the bottom. That's what people don't understand. And guess what? It's fine. We, we, we revel in being misunderstood because we're so used to it, right? <laughs> but seriously, this is a beautiful opportunity and I do feel like we're being called to really just like whatever's on life support. It's either about resuscitating it, right? Bringing it back around to, to new life or really letting it fully die so that new life can emerge from it, right? Because then we have the magician key here, the one, the I, the id, right? This isn't just about realizing that you have all the tools at your disposal to manifest the life that you desire. It's about picking them up and knowing how to actively use them. So let's continue with this, right? Let's continue with this thread. So we have the pentacles, right? Back to this uh, earth energy with the bear right? Come out of the darkness. Okay, I'm hearing a song. It's by Maggie Rogers, I, I believe. Yes, I believe it's Maggie Rogers. It's called Retrograde, and we are uh, in Scorpio season. Mercury in Retrograde begins on Halloween in a couple days time, and there's a line, um, come out of the darkness. Come out of the darkness. Come out of the K. Oh, that's fascinating. Okay, if I remember, I'll put it in the comments below, but if I don't, Maggie Rogers, retrograde. Um, yes, this retrograde season, it's interesting because it's going to affect everyone differently. I feel like for us, it could be power hour. <laughs> Not like a literal hour of power, but like power hour where it's like, oh, like I, I feel like we, we, it's like this supercharged energy because this magician, so we, we have the pentacle here, which roots us into the 3D and the, and the physical aspects of life right? But being grounded and, and, and getting balanced in that way, connecting to the earth and deriving strength like the bear from it, right? <clears throat> as air signs, it's, especially as Aquarius, Aquarians, it's very ultra important to ground ourselves, right? Because we live so much in the ether that it's, it's, we can kind of go flying off or feel disconnected or have trouble distinguishing, you know, illusion from reality in terms of like, oh, what is this offer? What is this person? What is this, right? But it's another made-to-order feeling that I'm getting here, too, which is really interesting. And then we have the swords, which, hello, we know all about the swords. They rule the realm of communication, right? The mind, everything of that mental realm. It's really about clearing out that th throat chakra and communicating and say what we need to say, but also allowing others to communicate towards us, even when and especially when we may not want to hear it. We may want to thank you next to them all day long. Thank you next. Thank you next. <laughs> you know what I mean? But there's something here. Again, it's this backstage image of like, I, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm glimpsing things and they're like, get out of this backstage area. <laughs> Wait for the curtain to open, damn it. <laughs> like, like, yes, a production is coming, darling. But, but we're going to keep you in this half masquerade eye mask and with the curtains closed for right now, which you, means you know it's good, right? Like when you would go rooting for, you know, your birthday presents, wherever your parents or whoever hit them in the house, and it was just like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Do I really want to know what they are? Because then it's going to ruin it. But, oh, I really want to know. And that's kind of the feeling that I'm picking up on here, right? The cups rule the realm of emotions. Also, our sexual energy, too, speaking of Scorpio energy right? 
really, really having a facility around our emotions, right? And letting them work for us as opposed to compartmentalizing them and going, I'll deal with you later. Oh, that childhood wound or, dr or that, that thing I'm holding on to. Okay, yeah, I've healed it. I've healed it. When really you've just gone through the fast food drive through and done a meditation or two. I healed it. <laughs> Honey, some emotional wounds, it's a sit down, seven course meal, okay? <laughs> so discern that for yourself, because I do feel like that's coming up here too. It's really, what needs to be, what needs to, you know, do you need to let die all the way? And what, what, what wants to be resuscitated, right? This could be old dreams, old wishes, old patterns of behavior. I used to do that. I was really balanced when I ran every other day. I'm gonna bring that back around for resuscitation or this needs to really die off, this habit I have of doing this which disconnects me, whatever that is for you. But this is really using all the tools at your disposal, the wand, the beautiful wands. This is picking this up and using it to act like the magician, like actively manifesting what it is you desire, right? You know, this idea of the caterpillar too coming out of the chrysalis, right? It, it, caterpillar to chrysalis to butterfly, right? Or if it's a moth, which I, I have a thing for moths, right? Caterpillar cocoon, moth emergence here. There is something about that. It's about going into this cocoon as well and deciding like what do you want to emerge as, right? What do you want your, I almost said what do you want your costume to be, but I don't, I don't want to give this impression that it's like light fair or anything. That's not what I mean, but it's mean like not your costume, but what do you want your play to be in theater terms? Because that's what came up in meditation, right? There's a lot of, I have to tell you. This is very um, machismo, like it's, it's very like feminine masculine, but I'm, I'm really getting like masculine vibes here, not just because of the magician and the hierophant, but I'm getting really, which is just about like taking action, right? And I do feel like we're being called to take action. I feel like a lot of our advice has been like, it's, you know, receive and tap into your intuition and get ready to receive the, and that's beautiful and that's amazing. And now it's like, it's turning here and it's like, listen, karma is coming back around to you and you're about to reap the rewards of a lot of hard work that you've done, whether consciously or unconsciously. Sometimes hard work is just being there for others. And that comes, and it drains us, but we're there and we, we, we build up that karma bank and then it comes back around and says, okay, what do you want? It's like this cat, the Cheshire cat is going, what do you want, boo-boo? Place, it's like this drive, it's like this like, what is your order? Order up. Can I take your order, right? Welcome to your life. Can I take your order, please? Okay, I just got chills. And you go into this death position, allow yourself during this Scorpio season, right? To transform and transmute. Yeah, I'm working on my order. I'll give it to you once I got it. Here's my order. This is what I want. Okay, let's get some clarifiers here. I have shivers. All right, the higher phone. Let's get a clarifier. <laughs> oh God. <sighs> okay, we have the tower at the bottom here. Scorpio energy. Hello. Okay. Um, four of swords. I, you know, <laughs> the fact that this is clarifying the hierophant here, and I was just talking about what's your order, right? Assume the Four of Swords position to get very clear on what your order is. What is it that you want from this point? And I would also re-examine old wishes and old dreams. Are they still pertinent? Do you want to edit it? Do you want to supersize it? Do you want to switch to the kid size meal? Because now you've got more than one thing you want and, and, and you want room to disperse all of these things evenly. Really get clear on this. Also, you know, they're drawing to my attention that this Four of Swords, we are moving into a four year. We only have, actually, yeah, a few more months, a little less than a few more months of this three year that we have been in, which is a time of extremity. When things are good, they're great. When they're not, they're really not. And we're about to enter a time of like this four, which is about stability and, and taking a breather and, and like a ready set and, and just appreciating where we are and where we've been. Think about these counterparts, right? Four of pentacles is about holding on, but not moving one way or the other because we're good with where we are. The four of wands is taking a moment and a pause to celebrate everywhere that we've been, 
and, and everything that we've accomplished. Four of Cups, it's, it's uh, personified, it's pictured with the dude literally sitting down with his back up against a tree as an offer comes in from the universe and he's like, yo, nothing more on my plate right now, okay? So we are going into a four year. And the fact that this is the four to the five here, five again is a number of great change. I really feel like the message here is yes, go inside and really get that to order. It's also about, you know, this has been a year. So heal anything that's come up for you either in the distant past or this year, okay? As you get your order ready to send to the universe, right? And again, back to this candle magic, this, 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 um, invocation, this manifestation, this ritual coming in here within Scorpio season, right? This is you, you know, this is you getting clear on what the order is. This is being asked for your order, right? This is you putting that, you know, into action and going, okay, well, this, this, okay, I'm clearing this. I want more of this. This is what it is, right? And then it's like, boom, I'm about to go get it, right? This is some mega energy, and what's on the other side of this? <sighs> I mean, it's like, you know, e true Hollywood story worthy. So to clarify for death. <laughs> okay, so we got five of swords in reverse, and I, I don't think you saw it. Were you able to see that? I don't think so. The way that it landed, and then it like spun around on the table like this, it was really interesting. So I'm obsessed that a moth is right here, and I was talking about moths um, with this caterpillar energy here. So, and I love that this came out in the reverse around the death. So, you know, the five of swords and the upright is really about I'm, I'm willing to do anything, even if it's outside of my integrity, to get what I want, right? The fact that this is in reverse here, and we've been talking about what needs to, you know, be allowed to die fully and what wants to be reinvigorated to move forward with you, and the fact that it's five of swords in reverse. Listen, what is the five of swords for you? Be honest about this. What is this? Who has five of swords to you? Who have you five of swords? What elements of the five of swords have been in your experience over this past year? Be honest about this, right? Who acted outside of their integrity towards you? Who did you act out outside of your integrity towards? It's gonna be different for everybody, right? Choices that you made. This is really looking at this clearly, flipping it upside down and going, okay, I had to see it and acknowledge it, right, with the swords, ruling the realm of the mind. This is our suit, right? Again, with the, I mean, again, with the five here, it's coming up all over here, right? Really, 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 really sitting with that and going, okay, I don't want to repeat that. I do want more of this and less of this, right? It's custom made to order, right? Let what wants to be let go of, like really release it and let it die, okay? And honey, this is work. I'm not even try over here trying to pretend like this can be done in the 20 minutes you have before you leave for work, okay? <laughs> like this, this is a process. And this is a very specific, you know, that intention. But remember, the bear comes out of the cave at the exact right time. And then once it's out, it's a hot several minutes before it goes back in again. See where I'm going with this? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's get a clarifier for this magician here. I do feel optionality coming towards you. It's interesting. Because they're taking me back to the song by Brian McKnight. Could you be? Could you be? Could you be? Could you be, could you be, could you be? The one for me, whatever have you. Um, and they're showing me and they're telling me that it has a lot to do with optionality and not just being in a place of discernment, but as the magician, like you're going to be manifesting what you desire, but around that, when your light is on, the light is on. 
and you're also gonna draw to, towards you around with what is in your best interest, other offers that may just not be for you right now or not be for you at all. When your light is on, it's on. They're taking me back to the moth energy. Okay, the North American Cecropia moth. Its purpose in life, when it is in that fully formed formation, when it comes out of the cocoon, it has no mouth because it's literally, it lives for two weeks. Its only purpose is to mate and then it can die. Uh, it's a little morbid, but we are in Scorpio season. Let's roll with it, right? And it emits these, um, I don't know if it's pheromones or chemical or what it is, but it emits this smell that attracts mates to it. And remember that saying, like a moth to a flame? When your light is on, I do feel you're gonna be in full moth energy here. There's gonna be a lot of people attracted to you. There's gonna be a lot of people coming towards you. Not every cup is your cup. I'm hearing that. Just be, because we can get into this place of like, you know, we're, we're feeling pretty balanced and we're staying in gratitude and we're eating, our, we're eating our spiritual Wheaties and all of this stuff. And then we have these offers come to us that maybe are not for us. And it's like, wait, why did I attract this? Uh, can I just get offers that are like of my highest and best good? Why am I attracting the chum? The chum is like what you throw into the water for, you know, for, for bait, which draws the sharks. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean like, it, you know, it's the chum. That, and, and with that, it's like some stuff is going to rise up on the shore that isn't yours before the actual ship comes into port. It's okay. Roll with it. It's just because your light is on. You aren't, it's not because, you know, you're attracting this because of things in your energy and it's about you. It's not about that. It's because your light is on. Sometimes that's the case. Actually, oftentimes that's the case. But for, for you right now, what I'm feeling is it's because your light is on. You're emitting those. It kind of looks like it too. You're emitting this scent where it's like, yes, you're going to have a lot of people and opportunities attracted towards you. Not all of which are going to be romantic. Absolutely not. I mean, some of them, yes, you heard it here first, but there's going to be just a lot of people drawn into your energy that want to be in your vibrational field. And it, it just understand that it's because your light is on. Try not to get too frustrated with that or impatient around it right? Because I completely understand the desire of like, I just want to attract what is mine. Why do I need to enact this filtration system and have to say no and have to say no thank you and have to say thank you next, right? Haven't I been through enough? <laughs> Why you got to put me into my queen of swords all the time, right? So to clarify, we <laughs> I was just talking about this. Four of Cups. Remember when I said that this was depicted by the dude sitting with his back against the tree with this offer from the universe, and I just said your light was on, and there's going to be some offers and people coming towards you that are not yours, and it's okay. It's not that there's something wrong in your vibrational field or whatever have you. It's just because your light is on, and that's cool. That's cool, right? This forest energy here. Again, th this also denotes things happening at kind of a quick pace, right? Where it's like, I got enough on my plate right now. But again, with this tree imagery here too, and the hanged man, I, I just feel it in the energy that, 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 it's, that it's okay. I just feel the need. Again, you have just like fours and fives, you know? Um, really coming in here to just say like, like, roll with it, thank you, next. <laughs> and that's really all that there is to it. You know what I mean? And it's okay. Don't get discouraged. The chum is gonna, you know, it's like it's like I I keep getting this image of this big ship coming in, but before it comes in, something about the current of the water as a result of the movement of the ship that's bringing a lot of excrement up onto the shore like an old boot, and you know, like whatever this is over here, like like an old. I don't know, like mini fridge or something, like all, it's terrible that people litter in the ocean, it's terrible, but um, all this stuff comes up on the shore that precedes the arrival of the ship, and I feel like that's the point. What's yours is the ship. The stuff that come up on the shore, comes up on the shore, oh my God, it's the pre-show. Oh my God. With the theater thing that I saw in your meditation and the mask and the don't come backstage and coming out of the cave at the exact right time, it's the pre-show. So you're about to have a pre-show of offers and attention. And I, I'm hearing offers of collaboration as well. Okay? 
Just continue to exercise that discernment, but guess what? Because it's clarifying the magician, I don't feel like it's gonna be an issue at all. There's no seven of cups here, there's no waffling. You're just gonna be like king of swords energy, where, and I feel like your advice too is more, is more king of swords, mister, and he is the king of thank you next. That is the king of swords. Because he's able to do that, but it doesn't cost him the same energy that queen does. Like queen of swords, you know, she's the only queen, that's us by the way, queen of swords, where she's the only queen shown in profile. The other three queens are shown, you know, face front, and that's so funny. And it so beautifully speaks to that Queen of Swords, our energy, where it's like, I will show you my profile and not my full face. <laughs> Until you have passed several rites of ritual and I know exactly who you are and what you want from me. But I do feel like the advice is King of Swords. It's like, make a dispassionate assessment of, you know, what is, what is the pre-show and what is the actual show? And I'm telling you something right now. The actual show, what is actual yours, actually yours, the actual time to come out of the cave and receive it, right? There's going to be no mistaking. I'm telling you right now. Because you also got karma, the judgment key. The major arcana business here is like on another level and I love it. You know, this is very much this feeling of what's yours is yours. And what's really funny about that is I was getting that very much with the Hierophant as well. Remember when I said building up that karmic bank? Remember when I talked about that, the Hierophant? And then this is 20 karma. It's, it's judgment, but in this, in this deck it's called karma, which is perfectly fine. Um, so this really is about, oh my God, there's three people on here. Do you remember when I said, make the most of the rest of this three year of the extremity and the cycles and really go with it before we're kind of chilling in the four year? Not completely chilling, but at least more stable, less up and down, less extremes in the four year with the four of cups. Not as much movement. Take advantage of the rest of this year is what I'm hearing. But again, the, the point of this, right? And I keep hearing roll with the punches as well. The point of this is that what is yours is yours and it is coming to you, and I wanna point something out. Do you see this eclipse energy here? It's like eclipsing the full you know, force of the sun. I'm obsessed because of what came up in the meditation with me glimpsing backstage and then them kind of closing the curtains in my face. What is coming towards you? There is an element of mystery to it. And I'm gonna be honest, I, I don't exactly know why that is. I feel like part of it is that they don't wanna ruin the surprise, but I honestly, I have the feeling that we wouldn't believe it if they told us outright. I just got shivers and they want me to stop. <laughs> I, I, I literally feel like it's like, it, you know, the, the queen, queen of swords in us, the king of swords in us, it's like if they told us exactly what was coming, we'd be like, get the heck out of here with that nonsense, right? And then we would ruin it by creating resistance around it because of disbelief, because disbelief is resistance. Did I talk about a suspension of disbelief in the last reading? It's coming up here again. <gasps> Did I talk about a suspension of disbelief? Because that is a theatrical term and then I saw the scene of the theater. Okay, I'm telling you, it's gonna be different for everyone. What is coming is of a caliber that we wouldn't believe it. If, if someone were to tell us exactly what it was. <laughs> I'm obsessed. And you know what I'm even more obsessed? Is because I feel like along with all these major arcanas, this really feels like, again, like a custom made order that is gonna be different for everyone. I feel like some of, some of you, this is gonna be the romance of a lifetime, right? that also brings in a lot of work opportunity around it. I feel like for others of you, this is stepping into your soul purpose in a brand new chapter in a way where you took the full time to be in the cave and cultivate this vision for yourself and then you step out and it's, okay, I'm getting a very particular image. This is fun. There's a reader on YouTube. I, I, I say that, I preface that like you're not gonna know who this is. If you're a YouTube watcher, you definitely know who this person is, but they're showing me this, so I'm gonna go with it. Uh, the YouTube reader, his name is Rich Lop. Rich Lop, okay? I'm positive that you, you must know who he is. He's like huge, right? They're pointing this out to me because Rich Lop, I remember finding his channel when he was relatively on a smaller scale. Like, you know, I, I think maybe he had as many subscribers as I do now, right? So I'm a small fish in this pond, okay? And I remember back then how his channel, it seemed like overnight it blew up like that. 
And I remember his light was on, he was in moth energy, and suddenly it just blew up and then he started getting a lot of attention. And with the positive came the negative, of course, because that is the way of things. It's, it's yin and yang, it's light and dark, it's all of the things, but they're showing me this parallel of like it happened like that for him. And suddenly it was just like, oh my God, all of this abundance. And suddenly he was swiftly moved out of that certain cave that he was in of like a certain uh, spectrum into a completely new atmosphere where the light was very much on him and his light was on. That's really funny why, that, why they're showing him to me right now. But they, oh, oh, and he's an Aquarius too. He's an Aquarius too. There's something to that about how quickly it happened for him. Because remember, the Four of Cups is also about things happening quickly and, and karma and the Magician is about manifestation. It happened so quickly for him that I remember at the time, he got a lot of comments that were like, wow, like other readers, I remember this specifically, other readers would comment on his videos and be like, wow, that was fast. Like readers that didn't grow as fast as he did. Like he, I'm telling you, he was like, it seemed like it was like an overnight sensation where he went from like, 30,000 subscribers to like 80 and it was like this and I remember him doing videos about it too and being like guys this happened real quick I don't know I don't know why but I remember this and for some reason they're bringing him up right now with what is coming for us I feel like it's going to be a lot all at once and really it's about creating this custom order and around that is really getting clear on what we need to let fully, you know, let go of and what needs to be resuscitated in order to move forward. Okay, let's get an oracle already. I'm feeling like these guys. I'm feeling like these guys. That's so funny. They've never brought up like another Rita like that. It's so funny. Okay. Oh, I just heard. I heard, uh, careful what you wish for, you're gonna get it. <laughs> I know some people may roll their eyes at that, but you know, abundance in any form can be intense. So for the remainder of this cave time, it's like really being there and it's about the right timing and it's 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 and I'm gonna be really honest with you I feel like some of you are gonna be pushed out of the cave to receive all this and some of you are gonna walk out on your own But whether you're kicking or screaming or going of your own volition this new chapter of change and abundance is upon you and just remember That there will be pre-show before the actual show and it's okay at the bottom. We have love here Gorgeous, okay Let's get a last oracle for my aquas. This is really long. Oh my God. Oh, I'm so obsessed. Faith and wisdom. Wisdom, the owl, seeing things clearly, right? Seeing ourselves and others clearly. With this wisdom here, this is very much Athena energy. She can absolutely, I mean, Athena is the queen of swords. She just is for me. She really, really is the queen of swords. So absolutely calling upon her energy, being the owl. You know that saying, um, it's from uh, Ted Andrews' Animal Speak book. The sun lives through the owl at night, which means that it sees at night just as clearly as it does during the day. And remember that whole idea of the sun versus the darkness of the cave, the darkness of Scorpio season and really letting this season work on us to bring to light in the darkness what needs to be cold or kept, right? And then moving into the magician energy and receiving what's ours, right? Our karmic payout here. And then we have faith, which is so gorgeous. Is that a starling bird? I'm not sure. But, you know, faith and wisdom. That's exactly what this is. But I have to tell you something. I feel like this is the prescription. But I feel like this is, this is also, I feel like a lot of us have this in spades and we've been actively practicing it. And this is like the how we got to this point. Is having equal parts wisdom and faith. It takes two. Right? It takes both, right? Wisdom and faith. Doesn't it look like that little great horned owl's like wearing a little half mask? I'm so obsessed. Um, I absolutely love this for us. It's really, really beautiful. 
also overall i just want to say like on a oh my god look at that sun coming out of the water here come out of the darkness retrograde by maggie rogers i'm telling you i'm telling you i'm telling you i'm telling you oh i'm getting a last message about daylight savings time going into the dark time of year daylight savings time oh i don't exactly know what that's about but there's something around daylight savings time the time of the year, the darkness versus the light. I think it's funny because we're gonna relish in this dark time of the year. Our light is gonna be on during this dark time of year in the Northern Hemisphere anyway, okay? I'm obsessed. All right, my beautiful Aquarians, uh, this was your first half of November general reading. I so hope that this helped and resonated with you. If it did, please let me know in the comments below. I would just love that. You know that I love you the mostest. Um, and with that being said, just thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, just thank you for being you and be well until next time.